The most common question I get is, Zach, can your data glove do American Sign Language? I said right there in the freaking episode that didn't have enough sensors, and building one that could do sign language would take so long that by the time it's done, YouTube itself would be cancelled. The second most common question I get is, how do you come up with your ideas? This is actually really challenging for me because I don't really come up with ideas. It got me thinking about my thinking, and I thought, when I think, I don't think it's me that's thinking. Welcome to Void Star Lab. Ladies, gentlemen, and cyborgs, I'm Zach Friedman, and I am what you would call an intuitive thinker. When I need an idea, I reach into the dark recesses of my subconscious, I grab the first solid object I find, and I smack it into the problem. And 9 out of 10 times, it's, it's a banger. I got an oscilloscope, and I needed to make a project with it. I said, show me what you got. Out popped a rolled up slip of paper, and I unrolled it, and it says, make an MLG Pro Gamer oscilloscope. Add water cooling and RGB everything. Put a window on it. Add a second monitor. Now go eat a fork full of peanut butter. That's pretty much my entire thought process as I conceptualize my next project. Except for the peanut butter part, that's just a joke with no basis in reality. The truth is my subconscious just works better than I do, and relying on it turned out to be a legitimate strategy. Once I came to terms with that, it became obvious why I wasn't getting anything out of to-do lists and tomato timers. I needed a strategy that supported not my attention, but my intuition. NYU psychologist Jonathan Haidt wrote a delightful analogy. The subconscious is like a big grumpy elephant, and the me part of myself is riding high on its back. If the elephant wants to go left, we're going left. If it wants to charge, it's charging. The only thing I can do is prepare ahead of time by feeding it, teaching it some tricks, and maybe attaching some miniguns to the tusks. That last bit was me, not the doctor, but his doctoral thesis did explore whether it's morally wrong to eat your own dog, so I wouldn't you know, put miniguns akimbo combat elephant subconscious is past him. My creative process, the intuition in other words, does its own thing, and my job is to support it. It might be an intangible black box, but I can still feed in raw material. I can clear time for it to work. I cover its blind spots, and most importantly, I tell it when it's time to wrap it up and deliver the goods. My strategy is a neat and tidy business school arrow circle with an acronym, and that acronym is, of course, IDEA. I'm not trying to get a book deal here, this is honestly how I set my subconscious up to dunk on life. IDEA stands for the four steps of improving my intuition, inspiration, downtime, exploration, action. All four of these serve critical roles for intuitive thinking, but before we get mental, let's talk about what you've been seeing in the background. This episode is sponsored by Keysight, makers of fine test equipment for big kids. On March 15th, Keysight is kicking off Keysight University, a month-long series of live-streamed events right here on YouTube. They're doing how-to guides for electrical engineering, interviews with industry pros, special content from your favorite electronics YouTubers who aren't me, test gear tips, technical challenges, and giveaways. Oh, the giveaways. The prize pool is over $300,000 of oscilloscopes, RF stuff, bench gear, all kinds of crap, 101 winners in all, deets in the description. So my usual gizmos are really just one idea wrapped in bacon, right? The Thunderfinger is a current sensing magnetometer, that's the idea, with lights, Bluetooth, and a glove stuck to it. Next week's project is different. It's more like a challenge where I'll throw as many mini projects as possible at this insanely expensive oscilloscope. This turned out to be a great chance to discover how I actually think stuff up, and also, you know, make some footage to talk over. I'm moving to Colorado at the end of the month, and my apartment looks like this. So time and B-roll are both in short supply. Thanks for understanding. Here's the idea. Inspiration, downtime, exploration, action. I'm about to recommend slacking off, distracting yourself, indulging your anxiety, and working really sloppily. This can be used to rationalize some absolutely terrible decisions, so if you follow my advice and it ruins your life, blame yourself. First, I inspire myself with new options. Then during downtime, my subconscious can form up the ideas. Exploration manually fixes my intuition's inherent weaknesses. Finally, I act on it to pull the idea out. Either it's ready to rock, or I have to back up to a previous step. I let it scroll off the top of the screen. Inspiration means gathering new raw material. For me, this means browsing Reddit, falling down rabbit holes on Wikipedia, uh, and listening to a frankly terrifying amount of YouTube. 
I think my leave it to the subconscious plan really only works because of the sheer size of the mental junkyard that I've been building up over my lifetime. At the very least, I usually you know, know some buzzwords that I can plug into Google so I can dig up more options. Everything leans on supplying myself with the highest quality assortment of raw ideas that I can find and uh, really doing it at all times. Phase two is downtime, and that means doing nothing. The nothinger, the better. I play video games, I mix drinks, I take really hot baths, I solder stuff. Like anything that doesn't need any attention, effort, willpower, or human interaction. I think my subconscious uses this time to like mash those bits and pieces together, creating like partial ideas and highlighting trouble spots. It really feels terrible to take a long walk when I'm on a deadline, but my subconscious isn't magical, right? It needs time to operate. Phase three, exploration, means following up on all those little red flags. I build little prototypes, I read documentation, I estimate timelines, and I generally make sure that reality is on board with the plan. It's really hard to come up with ideas and be critical of them at the same time. You can't really be a negative Nancy and creative at the same time. So by making this into its own dedicated step, I can really kind of let my subconscious run wild and then clean up the mess later instead of you know, stymieing it early with a pile of constraints. Gotta work the word stymieing somewhere. Intuition is especially loaded with cognitive biases and those have to be identified and reversed. We are physically incapable more or less of developing accurate intuitions when it comes to statistics and also are just really bad at things like time frames and volume. So I personally look up data and run the odds by hand. Finally, I take action. This is the fun part where I get to push the button and see what comes out. My brain isn't a microwave that dings when the idea is cooked, like I actually have to put myself in a real life situation to force myself to deliver. I often find that my subconscious bricked and I have to back up. If the idea is impractical, it, I have to explore deeper. If it's incoherent, it just needs more downtime to bind it together. If it's incomplete or it just sucks, uh, I need some more inspiration. Quick summary, inspire the intuition with raw material. Give it some downtime to work with. Explore some reality checks and finally force myself to act. If I hit a problem, I just reverse steps until I get unstuck. Speaking of action and calls thereof, how does your brain work? Do ideas just come to you or do you have to sit down and figure things out the hard way? How do you keep them coming uh, or cut off the ideas when you have to focus? Leave a comment. I am genuinely curious because everyone seems to assume that everybody else thinks the same way they do. Here's one way the idea strategy played out in this particular project. I want to make the Scopes cooling system fancier. I can't give specifics about inspiration because there are like 30 years of it in here, but let's just say I've been spending a lot of time on PC building subreddits. Downtime uh, probably happened after hours when I played some Borderlands. Exploration meant taking the oscilloscope apart and seeing that it used an 80 millimeter fan, which is a standard size. When I sat down to get moving, I pulled out a plan to head to Micro Center and grab an RGB fan to replace the stock one. But I didn't really like this solution. For one, the fan would block the circuit boards and anything gaming PC-like has gotta have a window. I backed up to exploration. I went deeper into PC modding sites and I looked at PC building contest winners and nothing really stood out. So I backtracked again to downtime. Uh, I found myself thinking about liquid cooling. Every fancy PC seems to have it and I know one of my Discord members has already water-cooled a Raspberry Pi. But was it possible to liquid cool an oscilloscope? Forward to exploration, I reviewed my pictures and I saw four chips with heat sinks that are exactly the right size for 40 millimeter water blocks. The surface area of even a small radiator is way higher than these heat sinks, so this idea should work. Action, I ordered parts for the liquid cooling loop and sure enough, I had already thought up a configuration that would send cool looking tubes and pipes all over the project. My subconscious reminded me that I also needed a pump, a tank, and a radiator, and I even had ideas of where to put them. Now this, was an idea. I found that there were real consequences to skipping steps. If I go too long without inspiration, it causes this death spiral where I run out of material, I grind to a halt, and I get too stressed to realize that I have to disengage and gather more. I just start thinking I'm uncreative. Uh, when things get stressful, downtime is hard because the temptation is to do something. It's hard to remember that downtime is doing something. It's not slacking. Uh, skipping downtime to put in more hours in the project is like jumping off the elephant and trying to make it the rest of the way on foot. If I skimp on the exploration phase, I'm not just more likely to make mistakes, the mistakes are worse. For example, I got the idea to replace all the knobs on the scope with RGB encoders. I now need to rig up 15 optocouplers to do the clicking. 
and a deeper exploration that would have taken minutes could have saved hours from this project. Too much exploration is just a way of saying analysis paralysis. There's always another number to find, there's always another fact to check. The key is to recognize that point of diminishing returns where it makes more sense to test in real life than to keep looking things up on Google. Too much action is the worst problem of all because action is just so time consuming. Too much action is why I recorded this in the first place. Like, keeping up with a weekly YouTube schedule was borderline impossible before Brooke and I decided to move 1,800 miles. The sensible play was to put my head down and hustle hard, and my pace slowed down, mistakes stacked up, and ideas were less and less coherent because I was just skipping the other steps. I had to remind myself how my own strategy worked and force myself to take some downtime. The truth is that if you're an intuitive thinker like me, just working hard is not a sustainable strategy. I have to disengage in order to think clearly and work fast. Inspiration, downtime, exploration, action. A strategy for folks who just seem to come up with ideas, a way to improve productivity by doing less. Give it a shot. Worked for me, I think. I've been working on this bonkers wanted oscilloscope throughout this episode, and if you want to see how that story ends, it's going to get its own video next week. If you want to check that out, hit subscribe and switch on those notifications. Inspiration is the first step of the process, and you won't find it in a more concentrated form than Keysight University. Starting March 15th, you can discover new equipment, learn tips from the pros, see new projects. Thanks to Keysight for sponsoring Void Star Lab. Mark your calendar, learn more in the description. Heartfelt thanks to my excellent patrons. Your support relieved enough pressure that my creative juices can continue to flow. Extra juicy bacon thanks with cheese to I'm Not Betacore, our most righteous Patreon collaborator. I've hidden their mysterious names somewhere in this episode, so go hunt it down. Our most generous lab assistant supporters are James Berry, Robert Breeze, Michael Dunn, Jason, Taranak, Varka, Zenforian, Salty, Brian Santero, Powerful CCH, Olivier Yiptong, Roger Pinkham, Gregory Jones, The Antifa, Tech, Bill Schuller, Daniel Cadwell, Akalia, Sir Derpington of Derptopia, Sam Wampler, Anthony Mincarelli, Azundo, Rusty Flute, and Tech Daddy. Special thanks to my impatient mistress of photography, my lovely wife, Brooke. Major shouts to our Eagle Eye Discord mods, Techniac, My Fair Julie, and Billy Rubin. We just became Discord affiliates, which makes Void Star Lab one of the most legit servers on the tubes, and the whole thing is possible thanks to their hard work. Join us in our spicy new URL, discord.gg slash voidstarlab. That is just one lab, the same way my name has a K in it. Thanks again for watching, and you'll see this crazy oscilloscope project in the future.